A crystal found at a river bend does not arrive by chance, and it does not arrive intact without reason. Long before it ever encountered moving water, it existed in an environment defined by balance, where temperature, pressure, and chemistry remain stable enough for ordered growth to occur. This stability is rare in geological systems. Most environments change too rapidly, interrupting growth before a true crystal lattice can fully develop. When conditions are right, atoms assemble with precision. They lock into repeating patterns, forming internal planes that dictate how light moves, how force is absorbed, and how the crystal resists fracture. These internal planes are the reason crystals break in predictable ways, reflect light at specific angles, and retain recognizable form even after extreme physical stress. Eventually, the stability ends. Tectonic movement fractures the host rock. Thermal changes introduce stress. Water infiltrates microscopic openings. Over time, the crystal's protective environment collapses and gravity begins its work. Material moves downhill. Whole sections of rock disintegrate. Only fragments strong enough to endure remain coherent. As erosion intensifies, the landscape becomes a sorting mechanism. Softer minerals grind themselves into sediment. Unstable compounds dissolve or chemically alter. Weakly bonded structures fail. The crystal, however, persists, not because it is lucky, but because its internal architecture was built to withstand disruption. When water finally carries it into a river system, the trial becomes more severe. Impact after impact removes sharp edges. Continuous abrasion polishes surfaces. Chemical exposure dulls color and alters outer layers. Many crystals lose their visual appeal during this phase, becoming cloudy, scratched, or stained. But these surface changes mask, not erase, their deeper identity. At a river bend, the environment changes again. Flow velocity drops, energy dissipates, material settles, the river performs its final selection, depositing only what has survived every previous stage of destruction. This is why crystals appear here, not because they formed here, but because everything weaker was removed. The trained observer understands this immediately. What looks ordinary to most people reads like a signal flare to experienced eyes. The shape may be incomplete, but angles repeat. The surface may be dull, but flat planes emerge beneath wear. Weight feels wrong for size. Texture resists expectation. Subtle details become meaningful. A slight translucence beneath staining. Internal fractures that follow geometric lines instead of random breaks. Tiny reflective flashes that appear only when light hits at precise angles. These are not aesthetic traits. They are structural fingerprints. Even the way a crystal rests matters. Orientation often mirrors how it fractured from its source. Multiple fragments nearby may share similar characteristics, indicating a common origin rather than isolated occurrence. This suggests a larger structure upstream, still hidden, still intact. Crystals do not travel far without reason. Their density limits movement. Their angularity slows transport. Finding one in a river bend implies proximity to a source that once allowed sustained crystal growth. That source may no longer be visible, but its influence remains recorded in the crystal itself. Over time, entire gemstone regions have been discovered by recognizing these subtle indicators, not through dramatic finds, but through careful attention to what survived erosion when everything else failed. These discoveries did not begin with beauty. They began with observation. This is why stopping matters. Not to collect, not to speculate, but to read. Reading the landscape requires patience and restraint. Disturbing material removes context. Removing context destroys meaning. The crystal's relationship to surrounding stones, sediment size, and flow direction all carry information about its journey and origin.
The presence of iron staining may indicate fluid-rich environments. Quartz fragments nearby suggest silica saturation. Angular debris hints at relatively recent exposure. Rounded material suggests long transport. Each clue adds depth to the story the crystal is telling. Most people overlook these signs because they expect value to announce itself. Nature rarely does. Geological value is subtle, quiet, and often disguised beneath wear. The most important signals are those that survive when everything flashy is stripped away. Crystals endure because their structure demands it. They are not fragile ornaments of the earth. They are records of extreme conditions preserved in mineral form. Each one carries evidence of pressure regimes, chemical balance, and time scales beyond human comprehension. Recognizing this changes how every landscape is perceived. A walk becomes analysis. A river becomes a moving archive. Stones become data points. And once that shift occurs, there is no returning to ignorance. The ground is no longer empty. It is speaking constantly. Stopping at a river bend is not superstition. It is respect for process. It is acknowledging that what remains has earned its presence through survival. Crystals that pass unnoticed continue to rest where energy placed them. Those recognized transform curiosity into understanding. And understanding over time reshapes how value is defined, not by appearance, but by origin, structure, and endurance. What makes these crystals important is not rarity alone. It is survival. They have endured heat that reshaped continents, pressure that fractured mountains, and erosion that erased everything weaker around them. By the time a crystal rests quietly at a river bend, it has already passed through a geological filter measured in millions of years. Nothing here is accidental. Every angle, every internal line, Every trace of translucence exists because the crystal formed under precise conditions and resisted destruction when those conditions collapsed. This is why experienced eyes stop. Not because the stone is beautiful, but because it tells the truth about the ground it came from. Understanding these signals changes how the landscape is seen forever. The earth stops being random, stones stop being ordinary, and value stops being defined by appearance alone. The real discovery is not the crystal itself. It is learning how to read what survived when everything else disappeared. If you value real geological understanding over hype, if you want to learn how professionals interpret subtle mineral signals, not internet myths, and if you're interested in how natural systems quietly create long-term value, then subscribe to ProGems.